接下来这场演讲，讲师是来自 Unity 的营运解决方案的技术推广者 Aluto Nelu， 题目为“游戏线上内容的管理与交付”。Hello everyone and welcome for,、uh, to this presentation. I'm super excited for being here for the second year in a row. I hope next year we can be together and I can get to meet you. But in the meantime. We're here, and today we're going to talk about asset management in Unity, both at editing time and runtime using addressable asset system, the addressable asset systems, and then we're going to talk about how to deliver that content to your users using the Unity Cloud Content Delivery Network. My name is Arturo. I'm a lead developer advocate at Unity, focusing on operate solutions. That's my email. That's my Twitter. If you have any question about this or any other thing, please feel free to reach out to me,、uh, preferably in English or Spanish. But、uh, any anything works for me. I, my friend Kelvin can can help me translating. So, what are we going to be building today?、Uh, this presentation is more、uh, like a demo because we will be using Unity. We will be using the command line interface. We're going to be using、uh, the Unity dashboard, but for that we're going to use this this simple game. It's a very simple mobile game.、Uh, we're going to be using Unity twenty twenty dot three LTS, not dot dot LTS.、Uh, we're going to be managing the assets using the addressable asset system, and we will talk about that in a second. And the the way we're gonna be delivering content is using the cloud content delivery service. Also, we're gonna talk about why is that important. Uh, this is the agenda. We're gonna get an overview of the project. We're gonna configure the addressables.、Uh, we're gonna generate the asset bundles. If you haven't done that, don't worry. We're gonna go step by step. We're gonna set up the project in the Unity dashboard and set up the command line interface. We're gonna create buckets, labels in the dashboard, and then we're gonna be uploading our bundles to the cloud. And then from our client, we're gonna be downloading the content at runtime. So these are the takeaways, but more than anything, I hope that you learn something, and I hope that you have fun during this session. So why do we care about managing our assets? If after all, Unity allows us to just put something in the editor, drag a reference to an asset into some 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 place in our components, and that's it. And that's true, but. Today, games and mobile games are more complex, and and the 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 what we want to do is to deliver a great player experience. So, take a look at this example. For example, you are seeing here a small mobile game, and we want to have videos, and we want to have new characters, and we want to have、uh, seasonal content, etc. But you don't want your initial download to be ten gigabytes in size. You probably want something around less than hundred megabytes, less than two hundred megabytes. And then, if more content is needed, then simply your game will fetch it from somewhere in the cloud without even having to、uh, update the app from the from the different stores out there.、Uh, it also applies for non-mobile games. You know, when you buy、uh, extra skins, when you, there are seasonal events, when there are new maps, and you want to get them, then you have to download them. So this also applies for for a、uh, PC. As well as、uh, consoles. However, on consoles, the way to manage this is is a bit different from what we're going to be covering today. But the idea is essentially the same: separating the basics of our game, like the bare bones of what our game needs to run, from the content that will be requested or will be needed later on during the gameplay. So. Let's talk about cloud content delivery, and this is a Unity service that is engine agnostic. This means even if you're not using Unity for the current project, if maybe you're using Unreal, maybe you're using your custom engine, you can still use cloud content delivery to store content, to store assets, to store videos, models, textures, etc., and to be able to deliver that to your players at the right time, at the right、uh, moment. How does this work?、Uh, in 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 practice, it's pretty simple, and for us as developers, it's it's great because you don't need to configure a lot of infrastructure in the backend, etc. This thing will just work. So you're authoring your game, you're creating your game. In this case, let's assume you're using Unity. You will separate your executable, your APK, your IPA, etc. 
from the asset bundles. Let's say I have a collection of hats, then I don't need my game to have that right away. Maybe if my players will buy the, the, the hat uh, in a purchase, then fine. So we separate them. Now we will submit our game to the to Google Play, to the App Store, to any 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 store, any any marketplace, and the bundles you will upload those to the CCD service, to the Cloud Content Delivery Service. Then, when you distribute your game, when your players are playing, uh, if a player, let's say, acquired the the, the hats package or, or the hats pack the client will simply download from the cloud. If another player doesn't care about the hats, then that, that client, his or her phone, will not download anything. So this is great because we are just delivering the right content to the right users. This is an overview of the, of the service. Uh, you can use it for 2D or 3D stuff. It's engine agnostic, as I was saying. It's reliable, fully managed solution, so you don't have to do any 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 setup uh, on servers, um, besides just creating your buckets and things like that, but you don't need to uh, uh, start a new instance of a server. If, if your players are playing a lot and a lot of requests are coming, you don't have to worry about that. We will be... Uh, worrying about that and also is backed by the top CDN networks so we have multiple um, points of presence uh, in different places of the world so you know that if a player of yours is located somewhere uh, that player will request or will download the content from the, the point of presence that is more optimal uh, to download from. Okay, so let me talk about a couple of concepts uh, on the cloud content delivery side. Uh, before we jump into the actual demo. So we have the concept of a bucket. A bucket is basically a container of your assets, although we call them entries in the context of, of, of the cloud. So uh, the bucket is where we will be putting all of our assets, our, our asset bundles, maybe our videos, etc. Uh, you can have multiple buckets. <clears throat> for instance, you can have a bucket for testing, another bucket for production, etc. You can have as many as you want. Then within a bucket, you have what we call releases. Basically, a release is a snapshot, uh, a snapshot in, in, in time of what your assets are at that point in time. So let's say I upload uh, a, a map for level two, a map for level three, and then I say, I'm gonna create a release. So that release will contain the map for level one, the map for level two. Later on, I upload a third level, and I take a snapshot, then that third level will have level one, two, and three. And these are the snapshots. Okay, as I, would say, as I was saying, in the context of the cloud, we don't call them necessarily assets. We call uh, each file an entry. So uh, an entry can be, of course, a, 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 a file, an, an actual 3D model, for example, or a video or a texture, but also an asset bundle can be an entry. Uh, so that's an entry, depending on maybe you're using another engine, an entry might be a different thing, but this is essentially what it means. Now we can have badges, and remember this is in the context of the cloud because we can also have labels in Unity, don't get confused with that, but we can have badges to tell the, to tell the service, okay, you know, this release has this batch, for example, is the batch for the seasonal content for something in February, right? So you assign that, that batch to a particular release and you can play around with the batches. You can say, okay, now the batch will go to release two or release three or uh, many uh, as many releases as you, as you have. The only condition is that one release can only be assigned to one batch. So from from our game, when we request, oh, bring me whatever has the latest content, we can request the uh, the release with the batch latest assigned to it. There's another process called the promotion process. Basically, means as you as you remember, we can have multiple um, buckets. I'm testing on development. I'm sorry. I'm developing in development, and I say, okay, release eight is working, I'm going to send that to my testers or to the to the QA team. So I promote my release to the staging uh, bucket. And then people or the, the QA team runs test, 
And then they say, oh, you know, release five. From all the releases that that were uh, uh, promoted, then that's the one that will go to, to production. And then on production, that's going to be the bucket that our players will download the content from. For the players, this is transparent. They don't have to worry about anything, but this is in the back end how it looks. And it's pretty simple to, to, to create this bucket, etc. Now, talking about the addressable asset system, this is a package that you can get from the package manager that allows you to manage your assets both at runtime and at editing time in a simpler way. Basically, instead of referencing the asset by its uh, location relative to your assets folder or to your project, you simply assign an, a, a, a batch, uh, sorry, a, a, an address, and you request that from your code. You say, oh, you know, instantiate, the character or the main player. And the main player can be located locally or can be in the cloud or can be on any folder. We don't care. We simply instantiate that once it's ready and safe to instantiate. So that's pretty much it. I have to say that you don't need to use addressables to use CCD and you don't need to use CCD to use addressables. However, if you're using both, you, you can take the most out of, uh, of both worlds. So let's jump into Unity. First, I want to show you the game, how it works. It's a very simple game, as I was saying. I click play and I control this small dinosaur. She gets a uh, hat instantiated as soon as I click play. I have to collect the key and then find the exit. Then we load the second level and we have to do basically the same thing. Uh, probably it's not a super fun game to play, but it helps us understand the different concepts. You can see that we have multiple levels, that we have the, the hats for, let's say, some sort of store or something. So that's pretty much how we have to play this, this game. Okay, so let's now talk about the asset, uh, the addressable assets. If you don't have it installed yet, you have to go to Window. Package Manager, and make sure that you have the addressables package installed. As you can see here, I'm using the latest version or the verified version for my Unity uh, editor version here. For CCD, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter, but that's pretty much it. Now, after I, I I've done that, if I go here to Window Asset Management, I have an addressables option uh, with uh, with different windows. I'm going to start with Groups. And here we will see one concept first, the, the concept of having our assets grouped into groups. So for example, you can see here that I have this default local group that contains two scenes, the main menu scene, and the loading scene. This means when I build my game, when I build this for, let's say, Android and I generate an APK, I'm just going to be bundling these two uh, scenes with it. Now, the scene contains multiple, multiple assets. For example, the main menu scene, you can see here that it contains uh, a canvas with some textures, etc. The loading scene as well contains some other things. And I know that this is the default local group. And if I click on it and I go here to the inspector now, you can see that it's telling me two things here. Uh, ignore for the time being the, the other settings. Just let's pay attention on the content packing and loading. And it's saying, you know, when you build this, build it to build it to a local path, and when you load it, load it from a local uh, path, which is somewhere on my machine, right? The same goes for level zero. My level zero is also going to be local. So when I ship my game, I will have the main menu, loading scene, the first level. So my players can play right away, even if they don't download anything right away. Now. If I click on hats, you can see that this group has uh, it's configured differently. It has this remote build path and this remote load path, meaning we're going to build the bundles somewhere on the computer, but when we load them, we're not going to be loading them from there, or we're not, we're not going to assume that they are located on my, on my, on my build uh, application. It's going to be somewhere we have to figure it out out later, but it's going to be loaded from somewhere else. In this case, we know from a server somewhere, and that's it. Level 01, level 02, and level 03, they are also going to be uh, remotely built and remotely downloaded or remotely loaded. 
Now you can see here that inside my groups, and you can create custom groups. Like if I go here to create group, I can create another group. In this case, just for, for time uh, sake, I have them created here. I just want to show you that, for example, my level 00, zero only has one scene there. But this scene, as you can see here, let me open that scene over here, level 00. zero. It contains a bunch of, of assets. It's not just one single file. It actually contains a lot of assets here. The same for the scene uh, one, scene two, and scene three. They have a lot of a lot of stuff going on. However, I'm just referencing one asset there, which is the scene. Well, addressables also manages all the dependencies that my asset has with other assets. In this case, the scene has dependencies uh, on the, my character model, the environment model, all those things are managed for us. I don't have to worry about that. How can I make sure that these assets are addressable? So if you, or if I want to be explicit about it, well, it's pretty simple. Uh, just click on any asset, for example, here, level zero. And if I go to the inspector, you can see that I have this already here on, on addressable, under as addressable. If there's an asset that is not addressable, let's say this door material, it's probably managed or referenced somewhere else because it's it's been used, but I haven't explicitly said, oh, I want this to be an addressable. And I click, if I click here, or I can drag and drop it to any group over here, and then you can see that it's now it is now an addressable. Uh, you can see here that this is the address of my ad asset. Uh, I could say something like door mat, door material, and this is going to be the address that I'll be using from now on. So door mat is is short for the door material. This is the the address of my asset. Even if I move these to somewhere else on my computer, on my project, et cetera. It doesn't matter uh, because we're not now going to be referencing that asset using its address. I'm gonna remove that, I don't need it. And that's that's pretty much how, um, how we set up addressables. There are considerations regarding memory management and other things uh, for, for when you are defining how you want your groups to be uh, grouped. Uh, if you want to use labels, etc. But for the for this this example, we're just going to leave everything as it is here. However, just make sure that uh, you understand the memory implications. And I'll link uh, uh, something to the blog, the Unity blog, where one of the engineers talks about uh, optimizing memory when using addresses. But let's go back to the example. So. Um, <clears throat> I want to show you real quick a couple of scripts just so you see how this is working inside inside the, the code, right? So real quick, I want to show you, and I apologize if I'm not looking at you all, at all times, my monitor is here, so that's why you might see something weird. So let's take a look. Let me increase the size of the text and here, the first thing is I need to use the addressable assets namespace because I need to use certain functions that are not part of the Unity engine, uh, or, or sorry, the, the, the default namespace. I need this, this namespace here. So when I, I, I load the game for the first time, uh, what I'm going to do is I present the main menu, but when I click play, I need to show the, the loading scene. And for that, I will load that scene. What I'm doing here is I'm loading the scene using the addressables uh, class, not the scene manager. Sometimes you've managed your scenes using the scene manager. In this case, we're using addressables and we're loading the scene synchronously. And this is another important thing to consider when working with addressables uh, is the fact that addressable works um, primarily in an asynchronous way. That means if you want to load a scene, well, it's going to start loading the scene. It's going to try to download it if it's not there, etc. But then the execution of the game can continue over multiple frames until the scene is actually loaded and presented. That's asynchronous. In the case of synchronous uh, execution, that will mean, which is not that I'm using here, that will mean, okay, I need to load the scene. I have to wait until everything is loaded. 
before continuing. So you get the, the differences here. Anyway, so I'm loading in um, single mode. That means as soon as I, I, I have the, sec the scene that I want to load ready, I simply uh, destroy the previous uh, scene over here. And that's pretty much it. That's how we are managing our, our scenes here using the addressables, um, using the addressables API. Now, another example that I want to show you is this loading uh, script. So if I go to the loading scene over here, you can see that we have, well, that actually looks wrong, but we have this, this uh, loading loading there. That means as soon as I load my, my, my loading scene, I want to request the next level, the next actual playable level. Uh, and I have this slider here to show the percentage that I have of the download. So you can see here, I need to accommodate those uh, anchors over there, but you get the idea. So let's take a look at the script. It's pretty similar. Um, as soon as I, I, I load this, this in, I want to lo load the, 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 the next level, right? So this is what I'm going to be, what I'm going to be uh, doing over here. So on enable, what I'm doing is I want to download the dependencies for level. It can be level 01, level 02, level 03. This is just basically the, the number of the level that we want to load next. So we are first downloading the dependencies. We are not going to present anything. We're going, not going to show the, the scene right away. We're just going to download that. And here there's another interesting thing, which is a handle. Uh, you can see here is an asynchronous operation handle that comes from Unity Engine Resource Management Async Operations. That's, that handle will allow us to subscribe and listen to when the, the when our operation is complete. When basically in this case, when we have downloaded all the, the, the assets needed for level 01 or 02 to be presented. And here we're subscribing to these on scene loaded. So once the actual download occurs, and, and when I say download, that's just to assume that this is on the cloud, but this, this level, and in fact, you remember level zero, zero, it's going to be local. So there won't be any download uh, necessarily, but in some cases that will be on a cloud and that there will be level one, two, and three, they will be downloaded actually. So once we uh, actually know that the, the operation has been completed, we check if we succeeded, uh, if the, the uh, operation succeeded downloading, and then we're going to activate the play button, uh, just basically this, this button that I have here off, this one over here. I also have to fix that, those things there, the anchors. But anyway, so then that's the button. I know that this next level is ready. So when the player presses the button, we're going to execute this go to next level, and we're actually going to load the scene here. Now, Differently from what I was doing previously in the in the other script in the game manager, remember here, I'm sure that the scene is 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 downloaded, is is ready to be presented. So uh, this is the difference uh, between one or the other. Another example that I want to give you on script is uh, on this player configurator script. So <clears throat> remember every time we load a, a level. My character, she has a different height. So we're doing something similarly here. Uh, we are going to download the, the hats because they will be purchased purchased via store or something. So I'm using also an async operation handle. As soon as I start, I say, you know, set the hat. And the set hat, what it does is instantiates asynchronously a hat or, or an object, not a hat. This is just the, the, the name, right? But instantiate an object with this string, with this key, with this address. Uh, this will be its parent. And uh, yeah, we don't care about the rest. So that's what we do. We're going to instantiate, instead of using gameObject.instantiate, in this case, we're using addressables.instantiate async, which means we're telling Unity, instantiate the hat, but the hat, might be in a remote server somewhere. So we don't know uh, if, if, if it's going to take 
seconds or minutes to download. We don't even know where the hat is at, right? So we're saying, okay, download that. And once it's completed, then what we're going to say here is just basically say, okay, successfully instantiated. Um, I don't need to parent it because I'm telling, use this 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 uh, transform as a parent. But let's say I didn't, I, I could read the object that was instantiated and then um, use a parent to make this a child of the object. So that's how our project is working. Now let's talk about the cloud. Let's talk about the cloud content delivery service. And for that, I need to go first to Unity dashboard, which is dashboard.unity.com. If you haven't, um, please meet the Unity dashboard. I'm going to log in. If you don't have a Unity ID, you just need to sign up for one. It's free uh, and that's it. So this is my dashboard. You can see here that there are multiple options, multiple services over here. I'm not gonna assume that my project has a cloud, uh, a project ID. So I'm going to create a project within the dashboard. But if you have one right now, you can know that if you click on the, on the editor, on the services window, uh, you'll be able to see if you're using uh, services or not. But in this case, let's assume that I don't, I don't have one, so I'm gonna create one here. I'm gonna name it Lodi Dungeon Demo. Lodi Dungeons Demo. Uh, it's not targeting children under 13, so I create my project. And this is the project. I have another one here, but this is Loaded Dungeons Demo, the one that we're using right now. Um, you can see here that I have my project ID. Just take a note of that because we will be using that later. But this is the project ID of, of this particular project. Perfect. So I'm now going to go here to the 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 this icon over here, and I'm gonna scroll all the way down to Cloud Content Delivery, and I'm gonna go to Projects. And I have to click, again, my Loaded Dungeons demo. And you can see here that um, uh, we, we have a, a couple of options. Uh, what I want to click now is this onboarding process. So I'm gonna go to onboarding, so, so the dashboard actually guides me through the process of doing the things that I want to do. So the first thing is telling me, okay, are you integrating using the API or the addressables package? We're using the addressables package. If you're not using Unity, you, you will have to select the, uh, the API. So yeah, here's fine. Next step is to create a bucket. Remember this container of entries, that's what I'm going to create next. And I'm going to create a bucket called development. So I'm gonna be developing, that's the bucket that I'll be using. Then uh, we need to get an addressables profile and a URL. So I'm gonna click here on get URL. And you can see, let me zoom in a bit. Uh, thank you, James, but let's not talk to right now. You can see that this URL, uh, it's something that was generated for us, but it's not very complex. The first thing is, this is my project ID. Remember, we, we saw that in the previous step. And then we're saying, okay, get content from that project, from this bucket, this is the bucket ID of the bucket that I just created, and get me the latest entry with the batch that is called latest. Uh, this might be uh, seem overwhelming, it is at first, but in reality, it's something that you just generate once. And I'll, I invite you to, to check the documentation to see like the different possibilities. But right now we're just requesting the release that has the latest batch and latest, that's the actual name of the batch, uh, on this project and on this bucket. So I'm going to copy it here and I'm going to go to Unity. I'm going to go to Window, Asset Management, Addressables, groups. And remember previously we were talking about um, the, some of these groups being remote, some of them, them being uh, local. Now we're going to configure the remote load path. So for that, I'm going to go here to where it says profile. You can see here that I have a def default profile. I'm using actually a development profile. You can, you can create uh, other profiles. 
I'm going to click on Manage Profiles, and then I just need to make sure that I have selected the development profile, which is the one that I'm changing. You can see that these are the values for the different um, properties. The local build path and local load path, you don't need to, to change them. The remote build path, in this case, I want them to be on my assets folder, to uh, on my project folder to create a, um, a folder called asset bundles and then uh, to, to create another folder with the build target. Might be iOS, might be Android, might be uh, Windows, might be uh, Mac OS, etc. Then I need to set where we want to download the assets from. So here is where I'm going to paste the URL that I previously created. So I just simply copy, paste it there. Well, actually paste it. I'm going to save, uh, let me click and return just to make sure, yeah, I just, I'm just paranoid about that. Now we need to build our bundles. And that's gonna take a couple of seconds or minutes actually. So I go, I shouldn't have those at asset management groups and I'm going to make sure that I build the bundles. So click build. And actually before that, I want to show you that right now I don't have any addressable assets folder here. This is the, 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 the location of my project. I don't have any addressable assets folder. I'm going to build my bundles. Perfect. So it's done. Let's go to my Windows Explorer and you can see that now we have these asset bundles uh, the, 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 the target platform, which is Windows, I'm on Windows, and I have the hats level one, level two, and level three. Remember level zero, uh, it's, it's being built locally. So it's going to go with, uh, with the game itself. Uh, the, these ones are the ones that we have to upload to CCD. So let's go back to the dashboard. And uh, let's continue with the onboarding process. Now, the next step is to upload the content. And now I can upload the content directly there. In the past, I, I could have done that using the command line inter interface. In this case, I'm just going to browse here, uh, go to my loaded dungeons demo, my asset bundles, and then select all of them. Looks good. See how it's more than a hundred megabytes that our player will not to, to, to download the first time they, they download our game. So uh, only when they need these assets, they will need to download it. So I'm going to, uh, going to upload them. Perfect. So I've uploaded successfully all my files. I'm going to continue. The next thing is that we're going to create our first release. Remember, we have to take a snapshot of our uh, entries in a particular point in time. So I'm going to create a release with the assets that I just uploaded. So I'm going to say first levels, I'm going to click next. That release will contain the latest batch. We'll have that assigned right away. So that looks good. Uh, you can see a summary here. I added four uh, uh, entries. And it's good. I'm uploading to the development bucket. So I submit. And we have our release successfully created. So I'm going to close here. And now the next step is to test in, in, in Unity. So I'm going to go up in Unity again. Now, up until this point here on Play Mode Script, I, I was not using anything particularly different here. But I was using this asset database, which basically means Unity is not using the actual bundles. It's just using the assets there. So it's fastest, but it's not actually trying to retrieve the bundles from any other location. That was, that's why it was loading super, super quick when I was playing here in the editor. Now I want to use the existing build. That means it's going to, tr it's going to request those from the, the CCD uh, service. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to my scenes. I'm going to go to main menu. I'm going to make this larger. Okay, so I'm going to click play. 
I'm going to start. And then we are instantiating the hunt. Actually, it's been uh, correctly instantiated. We are downloading now the assets from the cloud. Uh, the same for the second level and the third level. So it's now working. These levels are not local. These are being downloaded from the cloud. Now, an important thing to consider is that uh, you can play around with the cache. That means by default, once you download the assets or once the game downloads the assets, they will be local. So if next time I need to instantiate the hat again, after even after I close the, 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 the game, if I need to instantiate something again, then I don't need to, to download everything again, it will be locally cached. But in some cases, you let's say you have a season event for something that happens in March. So in March, you can download or you can uh, allow players to download some, some bundles, but then make those to expire. So they don't add up in the size of the actual actual flag. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's how this works. The last thing that I want to show you uh, back in the, in the dashboard is the fact that, remember, we can hack multiple buckets. I'm going to create another bucket. In this case, call it production. I just want to show you the process of um, promoting content. So you can see here that I have my release one. I'm going to pro promote that to the, the to the production bucket. Sorry, I'm on development. I want to uh, promote it to production. And that is going to get the latest batch as well, so it's okay. And I'm going to promote the release. Now, you now probably saw, let me go to my production bucket. I need to update the URL on my addressables uh, file, uh, configuration uh, profile, because now I'm pointing, to, I'm pointing to the same project ID but I'm not pointing to the same bucket ID. The bucket is different, so I want my players to get content from this bucket, so I will need to go back and change those values in the configuration profile. So I hope this was fun. I hope this was useful. I hope that you can uh, take a look at the addressable asset system. If for your game using uh, CCD makes sense, I really encourage you to take a look at it. It comes with a free tier. Uh, you can use it for up until 50 free gigabytes per month, uh, just for testing. And thank you so much. Uh,